does not make sense that Africa can have so much, so many resources, yet Africa still languishes in poverty. We have banks that we don't own. We have education systems that we don't own. We have curriculums that we never wrote. We have political parties that don't service our own interest as people. We have passports they don't give us access to other countries. They have access to our countries. We don't have access into their own countries. And that's supposed to be democracy. They have embassies in our own countries, and yet they put the same countries in sanctions. What sort of a system are we talking about if we are to be addressing the issues of African democracy? African democracy is a crippled child who is sitting on a wheelchair, a paraplegic wheelchair. In as much as our countries are claimed to be democratic, they are not free at all. Our economies are ruled by the West. Our education is ruled by the West. Our medicine is given by the West. Our diseases are managed by the West. Our populations are managed by the West. Our technologies are, are imposed on us by the West. So which part of us can you say is democracy? The same countries, they sponsor a government, they sponsor a surrogate government, the government gets into power, after they're in power, then you put the same government in sanctions again. What do they want from us? These colonizers, what do they want from us? You wanted our gold, we took it. You wanted diamonds, you took it. You want our children and our body parts, your harvesting Africa is a harvesting ground of livers and kidneys and hearts. What do you want from us as a people? You took our art. You took our kings. Destroyed our civilization. Up to now, 400 years later, the colonizer is still watching to see how much more he can get away and harvest and pull and rape and take away from the African people. And all this comes under a big umbrella. Africa is going to become a democratic state. But in the midst of democracy, what democracy has been able to do more than anything else, it is to solidify the borders of segregation between nations. The border between Zimbabwe and South Africa, put more fences, put more dogs. The border between Zimbabwe and Mozambique, put more fences, put more dogs. The border between Zimbabwe and Zambia, put more fences, put more dogs. Botswana and Zambia, put more fence, put more dogs. And all these African countries walk around each other in funny little ties, flying around the countries, sitting around the United Nations, Africa Union, and we are discussing issues of democracy. The first idea when Africa wants to discuss democracy is how do we restore the African dignity by destroying the borders that separate the African children? I, my grandmother, is Shangan, Mozambique, on my father's side. My grandmother is Venda, on my mother's side. My father is Karanga, and my grandfather on my mother's side is Ndebele. So how can you put a border and a passport for me, that for me to go and see my grandmother's houses in Mozambique, I need a passport. To go and see my grandmother in South Africa, I need a passport. I must go to Pretoria first, go to Harare first. I can cross the river, the Limpopo River. And this is the form of the democratic Africa that our leaders are constipated with. I'll spill the beans as loud as clear. African democracy identifies a few educated, parotic Africans who become political parties. And they talk in cahoots with the funders, the colonizers. They walk into power not to help the African people but to look after themselves and maintain the system for the colonizer. Insurance companies are in the hands of the colonizer. The banks are in the hands of the colonizer. Manufacturing industries are in the hands of the colonizers. The pharmaceuticals are in the hands of the colonizers. Medicine, clothing, in the hands of the colonizers. Technology, in the hands of the colonizers. We'll be shocked to discover we are still slaves and servants working for the colonial system. Take note, I'm not insulting any political party, but I want to insult their insensitivity that they walk around and campaign. I'm saying this from Nigeria, to Uganda, to Kenya, to Ghana, to Zimbabwe, to South Africa, to Botswana, anywhere in Africa. Tell me one political leader who has made an intentional business of improving 
and establishing factories for his own people. Sit around approving business budgets, budgets, budgets for what? Just take that money, open industries, take that money, open up mines, take that money, open up agricultural farms, have food for your people, employment for your people. How complicated can that be? The model to follow is Dubai. Look at Emirates. They have nothing. All national fund. Use the national fund to make Dubai a capital city of industry for the whole world. Here we are in Africa. We have cocoa, we have bananas, we have coal, we have platinum, we have diamonds, we have oil, we have weather, we have tourism, we have everything. But in the midst of all these resources, our African people are still languishing in poverty. Can I ask you, the intelligent ones, what is the problem of Africa? What is the problem? We have the resources, we have the universities, we have the education, we have the skills. What is the problem? The problem is we are trained to maintain a system that does not benefit us. We go to school to learn to maintain that system. We train our children to look after the system. Our political system has no will at all to empower the local people. It has no will. There's no political party that wants to remove bread from the mouth of the white man. That's a fact. Because all these political leaders are eating with the colonizer. So how can you destabilize a system that is giving you food? So it's a typical state where Uncle Tom kind of boys who now are being told you are not you are not like them you are a better black than them please uh, you can eat here you can sign here you can own this also and that and be before you notice it five years ten years later our political leaders have just become rubber stamps in government for pushing a european colonized agenda i'm still looking for a country that will take its own resources and improve its own infrastructure. I challenge all the African political heads across Africa, go to Dubai, not to shop, go and study, go and study how a place that has nothing has been able to change its course from a desert to a capital city of shopping in the world. Go there and study.